It's February 5th, 2016. In Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, a quiet day at the central bank is about to explode into chaos. Behind the scenes, a shadowy group of cyber criminals is preparing something the world has never seen. They've spent months studying every system, every employee, every procedure, every security gap. Their target, the bank's account at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, $1 billion, could vanish in an instant if they succeed. These hackers are not breaking doors, they're not carrying guns, their weapons are invisible, malware, stolen credentials, and absolute digital precision. Every move calculated, every exploit tested, nothing left to chance. This is the story of one of the largest, most audacious and sophisticated bank heists in history. A cyber operation that would stretch across 30 countries, infiltrate over 100 financial institutions, and change the way the world sees money forever. Across the globe, the first signs of the operation began to appear. In a quiet office in Ukraine, employees noticed something strange. ATMs, machines designed to dispense money only when prompted, started spitting out cash. Without anyone using a card, a few unsuspecting strangers walked away with thousands of dollars, seemingly by chance. At first, it looked like a glitch, a technical error, a moment of luck, but this was no accident. Far from these bank branches, thousands of miles away, a a group of hackers was watching, patiently, silently, methodically, studying every transaction. Every beep of the ATM, every signal in the system was being monitored. Months earlier, they had quietly gained access to the bank's internal networks, not with brute force, but through carefully crafted emails and hidden malware. One by one, computers were infiltrated, back doors installed, administrator passwords stolen, giving the attackers control over entire networks. With every silent move, the hackers edged closer to their ultimate goal. The ATMs in Ukraine were only a small part of the puzzle, a test run, a warning shot, a demonstration of the power they wielded. For the lucky few who stumbled upon the free cash, it seemed random. But behind the scenes, every dollar was meticulously planned, every withdrawal tracked, every system weakness exploited. By the time authorities began noticing irregularities, the hackers had already mapped the bank's entire operation. They knew the schedules, the processes, even the small human habits of employees. They were ghosts in the system, invisible, untouchable, yet everywhere at once. What appeared to be a lucky windfall for strangers at the ATM was actually the first ripple of a billion dollar operation, one that would span continents, infiltrate dozens of banks, and reveal just how vulnerable the world's financial system had become. No alarms, no guards, no weapons, just a few lines of code and a plan so audacious it would shock the globe. The hackers' methods were both ingenious and terrifying. They didn't storm vaults. They didn't intimidate employees. They didn't leave fingerprints. Instead, they did something far more powerful, far more invisible. They turned the very systems designed to protect the banks against themselves. Every safeguard, every protocol, every assumption of security was quietly dismantled piece by piece. One technique was deceptively simple, yet brilliantly effective. Funds were quietly transferred from transaction accounts to accounts controlled by the hackers, but it wasn't reckless theft. They adjusted balances beforehand, keeping totals consistent, making sure that nothing appeared suspicious to automated checks or human eyes. Dollars moved silently invisibly, right under the bank's nose. Another method targeted the ATMs themselves. Machines that were meant to safeguard money became instruments of the heist. With a few lines of code, the hackers could command the ATMs to dispense cash directly into the hands of money mules. These were ordinary people, hired to collect the stolen money and funnel it to the operations leaders. The mules didn't know the full scope of what they were participating in, but they knew the rewards were real, immediate and substantial. The most audacious tactic however, was pure digital sleight of hand. Hackers created bank accounts in the names of these mules, with debit cards holding only a small amount, sometimes just a few dollars. Then, with surgical precision, they manipulated the database, replacing those small amounts with millions. Suddenly, ordinary accounts were holding extraordinary sums. The mules could withdraw cash immediately, leaving the banks none the wiser for hours, sometimes even days. Every move was calculated, every exploit tested, patience, precision, observation. These were the hackers' weapons. They didn't just steal money, they transformed the entire banking network into a tool for their crime. Without ever touching a single dollar in person, what seemed impossible became reality. A billion dollar operation, invisible, unstoppable, and almost unimaginable.
By the beginning of 2015, the operation had grown far beyond a single country, far beyond anyone's imagination. The hackers had infiltrated more than 100 financial institutions across nearly 30 countries. Most of the victims were in Russia, but banks in the United States, China, and Europe were not spared. The total stolen? Close to $1 billion. For law enforcement and cybersecurity experts, the scale was staggering. Teams from Europol, the FBI, and major international banks worked tirelessly pooling intelligence, analyzing malware, and tracing suspicious transfers. Slowly, painstakingly, patterns began to emerge. The same malware signatures appeared across multiple attacks. The hackers were meticulous, calculated, but not invisible. Even the most skilled criminals leave traces, small mistakes, subtle fingerprints. And for the first time, investigators had a thread to follow. It became a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. Every compromised server, every flagged transaction, every digital footprint brought authorities one step closer to uncovering the masterminds behind this audacious heist. But the hackers were adaptive, agile, constantly changing tools, rotating accounts, and staying just ahead of detection. Despite their cunning, the operation was not invincible. Investigators began connecting attacks from different countries, linking ATM manipulations, fraudulent transfers, and digital digital sleight of hand into a single global campaign. Every successful theft emboldened the hackers, yet each success also left the faintest trace, a breadcrumb that could unravel the entire network. The operation was relentless, sophisticated, and growing bolder with every passing day. Cyber criminals were no longer working in isolation. They were orchestrating a global symphony of theft, invisible, untouchable, and devastatingly precise. And as the authorities closed in, the hackers were already preparing their next move, exploiting the very systems designed to stop them, proving that in the digital age, the line between safety and chaos could be measured in seconds and bytes. In July 2016, specifically around July 9th and 10th, something extraordinary and entirely unexpected unfolded in Taipei. ATMs at First Commercial Bank began dispensing cash on command at dozens of machines scattered across the city and even in nearby Taichung. What had seemed like a distant, invisible threat suddenly became physical, tangible, undeniable. The withdrawals quickly added up roughly NT dollar 70 to 83 million, stolen from 41 ATMs across about 20 branches, and for the first time, the hackers meticulously orchestrated operation left a visible mark on the streets. Police moved fast, surveillance footage was meticulously reviewed, hotels were scoured, and a combination of digital tracking and old-fashioned legwork began to yield results. Investigators identified 22 suspected money mules, many from Russia and Eastern Europe, men who acted as intermediaries to collect the stolen funds and funnel them to the operation's leaders. Within days, three men were apprehended, men who had no way to slip through the tightening net of law enforcement. Authorities recovered the majority of the stolen cash, roughly 90% a remarkable achievement, but the real prize lay elsewhere. Phones were examined, emails intercepted, and these small digital breadcrumbs began to reveal something much larger, a sprawling international network operating with precision, coordination, and audacity. The slip-up in Taiwan didn't stop the global campaign, but it gave investigators their first tangible lead. It exposed the human element behind the invisible code, the intermediaries translating digital theft into physical currency. For the first time, authorities could connect dots that had previously seemed isolated ATMs in Ukraine, fraudulent transfers in Russia, and now cash being collected in Taipei. It was a moment of triumph for law enforcement, yet also a stark reminder of just how carefully planned the billion dollar operation had been. One small error, one moment of exposure, had cracked open the armor of an otherwise untouchable network, proving that even the most sophisticated digital criminals can slip, and when they do, the world takes notice. The investigation now had a trail, but the real challenge lay in finding the brains behind the operation. Authorities followed the money, tracing transactions across borders, monitoring cryptocurrency exchanges, tracking luxury purchases that could not be hidden. Every digital footprint, every subtle slip, became a clue in a vast, intricate puzzle. Their search eventually led to March 6, 2018, and a man named Dennis Kay, a Ukrainian, living quietly in Alicante, Spain. Dennis had built a life of relative luxury, coding malware from the privacy of his home, moving through the world almost invisibly, spending primarily in Bitcoin. 
At the time, he controlled roughly 15,000 bitcoins worth around $162 million in 2018, a fortune that today would surpass a billion dollars. Yet even the most careful digital criminal leaves traces in the physical world, real-world purchases, car payments, property transfers. Each one provided investigators with a breadcrumb to follow. Authorities moved in decisively. Laptops were seized, two BMWs confiscated, jewelry valued at $500,000 taken, and of course, his Bitcoin holdings were frozen. But even with these seizures, the majority of the stolen $1 billion remained unaccounted for. Dennis K. was suspected to be the mastermind, the orchestrator of a billion-dollar criminal network, but he was far from a lone operator. Cybersecurity experts estimate a core team of 10 to 30 people carried out the operation, each member fulfilling a precise role in this meticulously planned heist. What made this group so formidable was not just their technical skill, but their patience, coordination, and foresight. Every exploit was tested, every weakness identified, every move calculated. They had turned the world's financial system into a tool for their crime. And for years, they operated in shadows, untouchable, almost invisible. Dennis K. may have been the figurehead, the face of the operation, but behind him lay a network of skilled operatives, digital ghosts moving money across continents with precision and audacity. The magnitude of their crime and the audacity of their execution would leave a lasting mark on global banking and cybersecurity alike. The Carbon Act operation left a permanent mark on the global financial system. Banks scrambled to strengthen cybersecurity protocols, updating software, installing new defenses, and training employees to recognize even the most convincing phishing attempts. Yet, despite all the lessons learned, the heist exposed a stark truth. Even the most secure institutions are only as strong as their weakest link. So, a single outdated system, a missed software update, a moment of human or oversight could open the door to catastrophic losses. One employee, for instance, unknowingly allowed malware to enter his bank's network because updates hadn't been installed. That small oversight alone contributed to millions of dollars vanishing almost instantly. It was a sobering reminder that in the digital age, the consequences of neglect can be monumental. For cybersecurity teams around the world, this case became a benchmark, a reference point for vigilance and preparation. It highlighted the critical importance of monitoring, constant updates, and international cooperation. Agencies like Europol, the FBI, and major banks now share intelligence more freely, exchanging information in real time to prevent another billion-dollar breach. Yet, despite these improvements, not all of the stolen funds have ever been recovered. The Carbon Act heist remains a cautionary tale, a stark reminder that in today's digital world, the line between safety and chaos can be measured in bytes and in seconds. One overlooked update, one weak password, one distracted employee can give cyber criminals the leverage to topple entire financial institutions. And while technology evolves and defenses improve, the human factor remains the single most unpredictable and vulnerable element. The heist also serves as a warning to businesses, governments, and individuals alike. Vigilance is not optional. It is essential. In a world where money flows as effortlessly as information, the price of inattention is unimaginably high.